You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. Hi, I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and this is Extras from Extension on Eagle Community TV. September is National Disaster Preparedness Month, and K-State Research and Extension is back again in September to promote Prepare Kansas, a campaign that encourages Kansans to be prepared for emergencies of all kinds. Only this year, Prepare Kansas is going to have a little different look. In the past, we've enrolled, we've been given weekly tasks to complete uh, with the chance to win prizes if we did that. This year, however, Prepare Kansas is shifting. It's going to become a social media campaign where you will be um, surrounded by important messages about being prepared for disasters uh, during the month of September. So as we are talking about Prepare Kansas this year, um, the topic is also going to be a little different. I brought with me my disaster preparedness kit, and I know that you've seen this before, but uh, this is the disaster supply kit that um, we ought to have in our safe room, basement or the interior room where we would want to survive a storm. And this has all kinds of disaster um, uh, relief kinds of supplies. But for Prepare Kansas this year in the fall of 2016, we're going to be talking about uh, food needs and food concerns during disaster. So what I did was pull out some of the stored food that one might want to keep in a disaster kit. And um, the recommendation is to have three days of three days supply of food and water for each person that might be sheltering in your safe area and using the supplies from your supply kit. So let's at least start talking about water. The recommendation is one gallon of water per person per day for those three days that you want to prepare for. So, you know, for uh, just a, a small family, an individual, or a couple, you might be able to manage your water supplies in just these gallon jugs. A few bottle, uh, bottles of water, individual bottles that you can take with you, throw in a backpack, uh, that might be handy too. If you've got a larger family and you need to have a, a larger supply of water on hand, you know they do have uh, big five gallon heavy hard plastic bottles of water uh, that might be something that you could use in your safe room. I don't really like those because I can't lift those by myself. So uh, a water supply that you can lift into place that you can change out when you need to uh, is a great idea. So let's talk a little bit more about the food that we need. You know, we, um, we can hope that in our area of Northwest Kansas, that if there's a disaster, we will have help arrive uh, in a short order. But you know, if we have a major disaster that completely destroys our whole community, it may be that we need to be self-sufficient for at least that first few days. So again, let's shoot for a three-day time period and have the food supplies on hand that we might need. I've got a selection of canned foods um, that can stay in your kit, that can uh, sustain folks as they're going through um, a, a disaster, needing to eat some food supplies. If you have the kinds of cans that do not have a pull top on them, make sure that your disaster supply kit also includes a can opener as well. And I know there's one in the bottom of this kit uh, to manage that. Um, you can see that what I've got are things that are um, palatable without having to, ha having to be heated. So these canned products are heat processed, they're pasteurized, they're safe to consume. And if you think about, you know, what could I eat cold? That's the sort of thing that you might want to think about putting in your supply kit. And you'll notice that the things that I have in my collection here are things that have some protein in them as well. 
Um, you know, green beans, for example, might be a very delicious and healthful food, but they're also really low in calories. So you wouldn't want to store a bunch of food that only has 25 calories per serving because it'll take more than that to get you through a day. So something with a concentrated amount of calories, some protein, uh, some uh, carbohydrate in the form of fiber uh, would also be a great choice. I've also included some um, dried fruit and nut products uh, that can be also, again, those things to give energy, give a little bit of protein to be able to get you through uh, trying to feed yourself for a couple of days in an emergency situation. Now, the thing that you need to think about with all of these items is that they don't last forever. And so you need to make a plan for changing out the water in your supply kit, for changing out the food products to make sure that they aren't past their expiration date and that they're fresh and good. Anything that contains nuts also, you know that they, the fat can become rancid and unpalatable. So make a plan for once a year, um, changing all that stuff out so that you've got food that you know you can rely on in case of an emergency. The other thing we want to think about with Prepare Kansas this year is dealing with our stored food during and after a disaster. I'm thinking about the power outages that happen in the summer with storms uh, and that also happen in the winter with ice storms. And one of the things that K-State Research and Extension is really promoting for Prepare Kansas this year are these refrigerator and freezer thermometers. If you've got a thermometer in each compartment of each cooling appliance that you have for holding your stored food, you'll be better prepared to be able to know if that food is um, still in the safe temperature range, if it's starting to move into a, a more danger zone area, or you'll know how warm it got inside that refrigerator or freezer to be able to evaluate how much of that food you may have to discard or how you might be able to salvage it. You know, these are also great for anybody who's living in a rental apartment uh, or a rental home, for example, that might have those appliances there. You don't know how they work. You need a refrigerator thermometer as well. This is the sort of thing I will ask you. If you call me after a power outage and say, is my food still good? The first thing I'll say is, how warm did it get inside that refrigerator or freezer? We need that information to be able to make good choices. So make sure you've got one of these. As a matter of fact, K-State Research and Extension thinks these are so important that um, I've got 10 of them to give away. I'll give these to the first, folk, the first 10 folks that respond to this video and let me know that you'd like to have one of these cooling refrigerator uh, or freezer thermometers. I can give one per person, but honestly, think about how many compartments you have storing food at cold uh, or, or frozen um, temperatures. I counted up, I've got five of these at my house. So I'll give, uh, I'll give one away to the first 10 callers. Now you can follow along with the Prepare Kansas messages about food concerns during a disaster during the month of September uh, here in Kansas. We, it, I, like I said, it's a social media campaign, so you're going to want to tune into Facebook and follow K-State Research and Extension. That's the Facebook page that you're looking for. We'd also love to have you follow K-State Research and Extension dash Ellis County because we'll be relaying that information on on our Facebook page and adding other important information you need to know. Also at the same time, there will be blogs written on the K-State Extension blog page and that'll be great information to supplement the small bits of information you're seeing on Facebook. And we've got the address for that uh, blog site uh, that you're seeing at the bottom of the screen right now. So during September, it's a great time to get your emergency supplies organized. You may need it for an ice storm in a few months. You may need it during tornado season in about 10 months from now. It's important to have available in your home any time of year and something that you need to come back and revisit periodically to make sure your supplies are still working, the batteries are fresh, and your food supplies are fresh as well. 
Thanks for joining me as we've talked about being prepared for disasters and the K-State Research and Extension uh, Prepare Kansas program. I'm Linda Beach. I'm the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and this has been Extras from Extension on Eagle Community TV. You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. <laughs>